Indeed, they were constantly bumping. They could now fly strongly, though they still kicked far too much. But if they saw a cloud in front of them, the more they tried to avoid it, the more certainly did they bump into it. If Nana had been with them, she would have had a bandage round Michael's forehead by this time. Peter was not with them for the moment, and they felt rather lonely up there by themselves. He could go so much faster than they that he would suddenly shoot out of sight to have some adventure in which they had no share. He would come down laughing over something fearfully funny he had been saying to a star, but he had already forgotten what it was, or he would come up with mermaid scales still sticking to him, and yet not be able to say for certain what had been happening. It was really rather irritating to children who had never seen a mermaid. And if he forgets them so quickly, Wendy argued, how can we expect that he will go on remembering us? Indeed, sometimes when he returned, he did not remember them, at least not well. Wendy was sure of it. She saw recognition come into his eyes as he was about to pass them the time of day and go on. Once even, she had to call him by name. I'm Wendy, she said agitatedly. He was very sorry. I say, Wendy, he whispered to her. Always, if you see me forgetting you, just keep on saying I'm Wendy and then I'll remember. Of course, this was rather unsatisfactory. However, to make amends, he showed them how to lie out flat on a strong wind that was going their way, and this was such a pleasant change that they tried it several times and found they could sleep thus with security. Indeed, they would have slept longer, but Peter tired quickly of sleeping, and soon he would cry in his captain voice, We get off here! So, with occasional tiffs, but on the whole rollicking, they drew near the Neverland. For after many moons, they did reach it, and, what is more, they had been going pretty straight all the time, not perhaps so much owing to the guidance of Peter or Tink as because the island was out looking for them. It's only thus that anyone may sight those magic shores. There it is, said Peter calmly. Where? Where? Where all the arrows are pointing. Indeed, a million golden arrows were pointing it out to the children, all directed by their friend the sun, who wanted them to be sure of their way before leaving them for the night. Wendy and John and Michael stood on tiptoe in the air to get their first sight of the island. Strange to say, they all recognized it at once, and until fear fell upon them, they hailed it, not as something long dreamt of and seen at last, but as a familiar friend to whom they were returning home for the holidays. John, there's the lagoon. Wendy, look at the turtles burying their eggs in the sand. I say, John, I see your flamingo with a broken leg. Look, Michael, there's your cave. John, what's that in the brushwood? It's a wolf with her whelps, Wendy. I do believe that's your little whelp. There's my boat, John, with her sides stove in. No, it isn't. Why, we burned your boat. That's her at any rate. I say, John, I see the smoke of the redskin camp. Where? Show me, and I'll tell you by the way the smoke curls whether they're on the warpath. There, just across the mysterious river. I see now, yes, they are on the warpath right enough. Peter was a little annoyed with them for knowing so much, but if he wanted to lord it over them, his triumph was at hand. For have I not told you that anon fear fell upon them? It came as the arrows went, leaving the island in gloom. In the old days at home, the Neverland had always begun to look a little dark and threatening by bedtime. Then unexplored patches arose in it and spread. Black shadows moved about in them. The roar of the beasts of prey was quite different now. And above all, you lost the certainty that you would win. You were quite glad that the night lights were in. You even liked Nana to say that this was just the mantelpiece over here and that the Neverland was all make-believe. Of course, the Neverland had been make-believe in those days, but it was real now and there were no night lights, and it was getting darker every moment. And where was Nana? They had been flying apart, but they huddled close to Peter now. His careless manner had gone at last. His eyes were sparkling, and a tingle went through them every time they touched his body. 
They were now over the fearsome island, flying so low that sometimes a tree grazed their feet. Nothing horrid was visible in the air, yet their progress had become slow and labored, exactly as if they were pushing their way through hostile forces. Sometimes they hung in the air until Peter had beaten on it with his fists. They don't want us to land, he explained. Who are they? Wendy whispered, shuddering. But he could not or would not say. Tinkerbell had been asleep on his shoulder, but now he wakened her and sent her on in front. Sometimes he poised himself in the air, listening intently with his hand to his ear, and again he would stare down with eyes so bright that they seemed to bore two holes to earth.